So uh, again, these week's section notes are going to be pretty short. So I'm just going to keep talking. You guys are going to keep asking questions. And we'll try to fill up as much time as possible. Uh, this P set, so a lot of people think that this P set isn't necessarily difficult, but it's very long. Like, the P set spec itself takes an hour to read. Uh, and it's not even like we give you a lot of the SQL you could possibly need to use. Uh, we walk you through a lot of it. So it shouldn't be too bad. Has anyone started or finished? It's, it's the last piece of it. Oh my god. Usually there's a JavaScript one after that, after this. But again, calendar change things makes everything one week shorter, and we no longer have a JavaScript piece set. I don't know how that affects whether JavaScript is going to appear on the exam or quiz one. Uh, I imagine it'll be something like you need to know high level things about JavaScript, but I doubt we'd just <coughs> give you straight JavaScript code since you haven't had a piece set in it. But that'll be stuff for quiz review slash next week. OK, section of questions. Uh, a lot of this stuff is somewhat poorly worded, but we'll discuss why. So unlike C, PHP is a dynamically typed language. What does this mean, you ask? Well, say goodbye to all those char, float, int, and other keywords you need to use when declaring variables and functions in C. In PHP, a variable's type is determined by the value that it's currently holding. So before we type this code into a file called dynamic.php, uh, the so PHP is dynamically typed. That is true. I disagree with the fact that that means we're saying goodbye to char, float, int, and other <coughs> keywords. So the exact difference between dynamically typed and the alternative, which is statically typed, is that dynamically typed, uh, all of your like type checking and stuff happens at runtime, whereas statically typed, it happens at compile time. So the word static in general seems to mean compile time things. I guess there are other uses for it. But like in C, when you declare a static variable, it's storage is allocated at compile time. Uh, so here, dynamically typed just means that like, well, in C, if you try to add like a string and an integer, when you compile it, it's going to complain. Because it's going to say that uh, like you can't add an int and a pointer. It's just not a valid operation. So that is another thing that we'll get to in a second. But that sort of checking, the fact that it complains at compile time, is static checking, static type checking. So there are languages where you don't need to say char, float, in, and all of those things. But the language can tell from like the context of the thing what type it's supposed to be. But it's still statically typed. So like if you take 51, OCaml, you never need to use any of these types but it still refuses to let you, like, uh, it still will, at compile time, say, you can't do this because you're mixing an int and a string. So dynamically typed just means that sometime during runtime, you're going to get a complaint. So if you have also used Java before, so in general, almost any C type language is going to be statically typed. So C, C++, Java, all of those are generally statically typed. Like in Java, when you compile something and you're like saying like string s equals new something that isn't a string. So that's going to complain because those types just don't match up. That's going to complain at compile time. But it also has some dynamic time things. Like if you try to cast something to a type that's more specific than its current type, then there's nothing you can do at compile time to check whether that cast is going to succeed. So uh, Java also has some dynamic type checking that as soon as it gets to that line of code when it's actually executing, it's going to do the cast, check if that cast was valid in the first place. And if it wasn't, then it's going to complain that you have an invalid type. So dynamic type checking. So type this into a file called dynamic.php. 
Okay, dynamic.php. So, I'll up that formatting. Uh, so we have variable, we set it to the integer seven, and then we're gonna print it and percent s, oh, so we're printing the type of it. So get type is gonna return the type of the variable. So we're just printing the type over and over again. We just php dynamic.php. We'll see that it changes from integer to string to Boolean as we go through. Uh, this also indicates that unlike C, so in C, like there is no Boolean data type, there is no string data type. There's char star, and Boolean just tends to be like int or char or something. So in PHP, these types do exist, and that's one of the big advantages of PHP over C that uh, these that like string operations are infinitely easier in PHP than C. They just work. So, coming back here. So we ran dynamic.php. This tells the <coughs> PHP interpreter called PHP to run the PHP code in dynamic.php. If you have any errors in the file, the interpreter will tell you. Uh, and so the interpreter uh, this is another big difference between PHP and C. Uh, the interpreter is like, so in C you have to compile something, and then you run that compiled file. In PHP you never compile anything. So the PHP interpreter is basically just reading this line by line. It hits bar equals seven, then it hits printf, then it hits bar, then it hits printf, and so on. So there's a bit of like a bit of compiling it does, and like it caches the results. So if you run the script later, like you can do some stuff. <coughs> but basically, it's a line by line sort of thing, and uh, that means that a lot of the optimizations that we get in C, so like compiling, is just generally like the compiler can do a lot of tricks for you. It can take out unused variables. It can do all of these sorts of things. Uh, it can do tail recursion. So in PHP, you're not going to get that advantage because it's just going to start executing line by line by line. And it doesn't really recognize these things as easily since it's not one big compilation pass over the thing and then execution. It's just line by line. So that's the interpreter. So back to our dynamic typing. Pretty cool, eh? You definitely couldn't do that in C. Now see if you can figure out the type of each of the following values. See this for reference. So 3.50, what type do you think that's going to be? Let's, whatever. So here are the types we have. We have bools, integers, floating points, strings, arrays, objects. And then resources, which kind of vague. Uh, we'll, I think there's actually an example here. Uh, then there's null. So null is a special type. Unlike C, where null is just like a pointer with address 0. So in PHP, null is its own type, where the only valid thing of that type is null. Uh, so if this is much more useful for error checking. like in C where we had this issue where if you, if you return null, does that mean you're returning a null pointer or using null to signify error or all that confusion we had at one point? Uh, so here, returning null generally means error. Uh, or also, so this is the same thing. A lot of things also return false for error. but point is the null type, the only thing of the null type is null. Uh, then callbacks, all right, these couple, callback is like you can define some anonymous functions, like you don't have to give the function a name, uh, but you won't have to deal with that here. So looking at the types that they do expect us to know, oh, now it's coming up, 3.50. Okay, so what do you think the type of 3.50 is? Yeah. So then uh, here, what do you think the type of this is? Yeah. So first one was float. Second one is an array. 
Uh, notice that this array is not like a C array where you have like index 0 has some value, index 1 has some value. Here, the indices are A, B, and C, and the values are 1, 2, and 3. So in PHP, there is no difference between an associative array and just a regular array as you would think of it in C. Uh, there's just this, and underneath the hood, a regular array is just an associative array where 0 maps to some value, the same way A maps to some value. And for this reason, uh, PHP can be pretty bad for like uh, really fast code slash benchmarking things since like in C, when you're using an array, you know that like accessing a member is constant time. In PHP, accessing a member is who knows how much time since it's probably constant if like it hashes correctly. Uh, who knows what it's really doing underneath the hood. You really need to look at the implementation to see how it's going to deal with that. So then f open. Uh, I think here, let's just PHP manual f open to look at the return type. So we see here you can look up pretty much any function in the PHP manual, and it, you'll get at least the, this is sort of the man page of PHP. So the return type is going to be resource. That's why I looked it up, because we didn't really define resource. Uh, the idea of re resource, so like in C, you kind of got like a file star or whatever. In PHP, the resource is your file star. It's what you're going to be reading from. It's what you're going to be writing to. Uh, it's, it's usually like external. So it's a resource you can pull things from and throw things to. And finally, what is the type of null? null. Yeah. So the only thing that is null is null. Uh, null is null. <laughs> OK. So here, one feature of PHP's type system, for better or for worse, is its ability to juggle types. When you write a line of PHP code that combines values of different types, PHP will try to do the sensible thing. Try out each of the following lines of PHP code once printed out. Is it what you expected? Why or why not? So this fact about PHP is what makes it what we call weakly typed. Uh, weakly typed and strongly typed are, in general, not like uh, there are different uses for those terms. But most people use weakly typed and strongly typed to mean uh, this sort of thing, where like string 1 plus 2, that works. In C, that would not work. So you can imagine this not working. So in Python, uh, a lot of people mix up dynamic typing and weak typing, and static typing and strong typing. So Python is another example of a language that's dynamically typed. You, you can throw around types and variables, and it's going to determine at runtime any error checkings. So in Python, it's not going, it's going to execute this, and it'll see string 1 plus 2. And this will fail because it says you can't add a string and an integer. In PHP, which is just as dynamically typed, this will not fail. So weak typing has to do with the fact that like it does things with types that don't really make sense necessarily. So like string 1 plus 2. I can imagine that being like the string 12. I could imagine it being the string 3. I can imagine it being the integer 3. It's not necessarily well defined. And I, we're probably going to see here that when we print string 1 plus 2, it's probably going to end up being different than printing 1 plus string 2. And this it tends to be, in my opinion, for the worse. <laughs> Uh, so here we can try these. Another little trick about PHP is you don't need to actually write the file. It does have like just run this command mode. So PHP dash R, and we can throw in the command here. Oops. Print one <coughs> plus two. I'll throw a new line. Uh, Let 
Ignore that. Okay. So this printed three. And I guess we can't even tell whether it is. So it looks like it prints three, and it's the integer three. So now let's try the other way around. Print one plus two. And we get three. And is it also going to be integer three? I, I honestly have no idea. So it looks like that is consistent. So PHP, uh, there was never any chance of it being the string 12 or anything like that. Because PHP, uh, unlike JavaScript and I think Java 2, yeah, Java 2, uh, PHP is a separate operator for concatenation. So concatenation in PHP is dot. So printing one dot string 2 is going to give us 12. And this tends to lead to confusion where people try to do something like stir plus equals some other thing that they want to add on to the end of their string. And that's going to fail. You need to just stir dot equals. So don't forget, concatenation in PHP is a dot. So other things to try, print cs plus 50. So now I've told you that there is no hope of this resulting in CS50, since concatenation is not plus. But what do you think this is going to end up being? I honestly have absolutely no idea. <laughs> Looks like it's just 50. So it sees the string, and I bet if we put 1, 2, 3, CS. So it sees the first string. It tries to read an integer from it or a number from it. In this case, it sees 1, 2, 3. Oh, CS, that doesn't make sense as an integer, so I'm just going to think of 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3 plus 50 is going to be 1, 7, 3. And here, it starts reading this as an integer. It doesn't see anything, so it just treats it as 0. So 0 plus 50 is going to be 50. And this, I'm assuming, is going to do something similar. I'm thinking 99, yeah, because it's going to take the first Yeah. So 99. Then here, 10 divided by 7. So if this were C, what would that return? Yeah, it would be 1, because uh, 10 divided by 7 is dividing two integers. An integer divided by an integer is going to return an integer. Can't return 1 point, whatever that would be. So it's just going to return 1. Here, printing 10 divided by 7. Yeah. So it's going to actually interpret that. And this means that if you actually want to do integer rounding and stuff like that, you need to do like print floor of 10 divided by 7. So you can't rely on just. I mean, in C, it's probably weird that you can rely on integer truncation regularly, but in PHP, you can't, because it will automatically turn it into a float. And then 7 plus true, so what do you think that's going to be? I'm guessing 8, if it's going to interpret true as 1. All right, looks like it's 8. So uh, anything we've done in the past 10 minutes, you should absolutely never do. Uh, these, like, you will see code that does this. And I mean, it doesn't have to be as like straightforward this, as this. You could have a, two variables. And one variable happens to be a string, and the other variable happens to be an int. And then you add these variables together. So it's difficult to know, since PHP is dynamically typed, and it won't do any type checking for you, and since it's weakly typed, and since it will just automatically throw these things together, and everything will just work. Uh, it's difficult to even know that, like, oh, this variable must be a string now, so I shouldn't add it to this variable, which is an integer. 
so best practice is like if a variable is a string, keep it as a string forever. If a variable is an int, keep it as an int forever. If you want to deal with like integers and strings, you can use like parse int. That's JavaScript. Uh, int val. I do this all the time. PHP and JavaScript, I mix up everything. So int val is going to return the integer value of a variable. So if we pass in print int val of 1, 2, 3, the 1, 2, 3, I'm guessing this is, all right. So, oh shoot, I wanted this in single quotes, so maybe not. <coughs> okay. So int val itself is not going to uh, do the check for us that it's in, uh, exclusively an integer. This is the PHP manual, like, there are just so many <laughs> functions available. So here, I think what I would use is is numeric first. So I'm guessing that returned false. OK. That's another thing we have to go over is triple equals. <laughs> so uh, is numeric 1, 2, 3, df. You would not think of that as is numeric. In C, you would have to like iterate over all characters and check to see if each character is digit or whatever. So here, uh, is numeric is going to do that for us. Uh, and it's returning false. So when I printed that, it printed nothing. So here, I'm comparing it to see, did you happen to be false? And so now it's printing 1, which apparently it prints 1 as true instead of printing true as true. I wonder if I do print r. Nope, still does 1. All right. So going back to triple equals, uh, in so double equals still exists, and if you talk to Tommy, he'll say double equals is perfectly fine. Uh, I'm gonna say that double equals is terrible, and you should never use double equals. So the difference is that uh, double equals compares things where it can be true even if they're not the same type, whereas triple equals compares things. And it will only be true. First, it checks, are they the same type? Yes. OK, now I'm going to see if they actually compare to be equal. So you get weird things like 10 equals, let's see what that says. OK, so string 10 equals double equals string 1e1. So this returns true. So anyone have any guesses why this returns <coughs> true? This isn't just about that. Maybe this is a hint, but if I change that to an F, darn it. I keep using double quotes. The reason the double quotes are yelling at me is because I've, I've put this in double quotes, so I could escape the double quotes in here, but single quotes make it easier. So 10, 1, F1 does not print true. 10, 1, E1 prints true. It's not hex, but it's close that it's like, so 1E1, scientific notation. So it recognizes 1E1 as 1 times 10 to the first or whatever. So those are equal integers. If we do triple equals, then it's going to be false. Uh, I actually have no idea if we do like <coughs> double equals, what about like 10 and 10 ABC? All right, so that's true. So just like when you uh, did like 10 plus 10 ABC and it'd be 20. So here 10 equals 10 ABC is true. Even worse are things like false equals equals null is true, or false equals equals 0 is true. False equals equals empty array. And th there's weird cases of like, all right, so that's one of those weird cases. So notice that false equals equals empty array is true. Z uh, string 0 equals equals false is true. String 0 equals equals empty array 
is false. So double equals is in no way transitive. Two things that are equal, or well, this, A can be equal to B, and A can be equal to C, but B might not be equal to C. So that's an abomination to me. <laughs> and you should always use triple equals. Can you do not equals equals as well? Yes. Okay. So the equivalence would be not equals and not equal equal. Uh, and this is actually brought up in the PSET spec, where like a lot of functions return, and the PHP manual is good about this, that like it puts in a big red box, like this will return false if there's an error, but returning zero is a, pos a perfectly reasonable thing to return. So like think about any function which is expected to return an integer. So uh, this function, let's say it is supposed to count the number of lines in a file or something. And so under normal circumstances, you pass this function a file, and it's going to return an integer which represents the number of lines. So 0 is a perfectly reasonable number if the file is just empty. But what if you pass it an invalid file? And the function happens to return false if you pass it an invalid file. So if you just do double equals, you're not differentiating the case between invalid file and empty file. Always use triple equals. <coughs> So that's all those. Uh, in PHP, the array type is different from what you're used to in C. Indeed, you may have already noticed this above when you saw that this is of type array. Uh, so the bracket syntax, the bracket syntax is new as of PHP 5.4, which is the newest version of PHP. Before this, you always had to write, oops, new dash. So before this, you always had to write like, uh, array, let's do it, oh, yeah, array a arrow 1, b arrow 2, whatever. So that was the constructor for an array. Now PHP has finally come around to the nice syntax of just square uh, brackets, which is just so much better than array, but considering PHP 5.4 is the newest version, you may encounter places that don't even have PHP 5.3. PHP so over the summer, we ran into this issue where PHP 5.3 was what we had on the appliance, but the server that we deployed all our like gradebook and submit and all that stuff to was PHP 5.4. So not knowing this, develop in 5.3, push to 5.4, and now, all of a sudden, none of our code works because there happen to have been changes between 5.3 and 5.4, which are not backwards compatible. And we have to go and fix all of our things that don't work for PHP 5.4. So for this class, since the appliance does have PHP 5.4, perfectly fine to use square brackets. But if you're like looking up things around the internet, if you're looking up some kind of array stuff, most likely you're going to see array, the like spell out array constructor syntax, since that's been around since PHP was born and bra square bracket syntax has been around for the past couple months or whenever 5.4 came around. Okay, so this is how you index, just like in C, how you would, let's say this is uh, array. In C, how you would index by Square, uh, square brackets like array 0, array 1, array 2. So you index the same way if you happen to have your indices being strings. So array A and array B. Uh, notice, well, array B. So why, is this, why would this be wrong? It's actually. Worse over problem. So B, it will probably generate a warning, but still work. PHP tends to do that. Tends to just, oh, this, I'm going to warn you about this, but I'm just going to keep going and do whatever I can. So it will probably translate this to a string, 
But it is possible that at some point in the past, someone said define B to be hello world. So now B could be a constant, and dollar sign array bracket B will actually be doing hello world. And I think at this point, or at least our PHP settings, if you try to index into an array and that key doesn't exist, it will fail. I don't think it will just warn you, or at least you can set it so that it doesn't just warn you. It just straight up fails. The way you check to see if there actually is such an index is, is set. So uh, is set array hello world will return false. Is set array b will return true. OK, so uh, yeah, you can mix these syntaxes. So like, I'm pretty sure what this array would end up being is, well, we can test it out. I'm pretty sure my PHP doesn't even write. Oh, I need PHP word. Okay. So uh, this is mixing the syntax where you specify what the key is and you don't specify what the key is. So three right here is a value. You haven't explicitly said what its key is going to be. So what do you think its key is going to be? Zero. I'm guessing zero, uh, only because it's the first one we haven't specified. Well, we can do actually a couple of these cases. So print r is print recursive. It'll print the entire array. Uh, and it would print like subarrays of the array if there were <coughs> any. So print r array, php test.php. OK, so it does look like it gave it zero. Actually, something to keep in mind here, but we'll get back to it in a second. But what if I happen to make this index 1? PHP does not differentiate between uh, string indices and integer indices. So at this point, I've just defined an index 1. And I can do both array 1 and array 1. And it will be the same index in the same key. All right, so now what do you think 3 is going to be? I'm guessing two. <laughs> and I will justify it. Yeah, so it's two. Or what if we did this is 10, this is four. What do you think the index of three is going to be? I'm thinking 11. My, uh, my guess as to what PHP does, and I think I've seen this before, uh, is it just keeps track of what the highest index it's used so far is, the highest numeric index. It's never going to assign a string index to 3. It will always be a numeric index. So it keeps track of the highest one it's assigned so far, which happens to be 10. And it's going to give 11 to 3. OK. Uh, so what I said before, um, notice that the way it is printing this array. So it prints key 10, key 4, key 11, key D. Or even let's do. So now it's, it, or well, I guess I didn't put a 0, but it's printing 1, 2, 3, 4. What if I switch here? Or let's actually switch these two so it doesn't. Now it prints 2, 1, 3, 4. So PHP's uh, arrays aren't just like, they aren't just like your regular hash table. It's perfectly reasonable to think of them as hash tables 99% of the time. But in your hash tables, like there's no sense of the order in which things were inserted. So as soon as you insert it into your hash table, like assume there's no linked list, and like you could judge within a linked list which was inserted first. Uh, but here, we inserted two first, and it knows when it's printing out this array that two comes first. 
Uh, it does not print it out in just any order. So the technical data structure that it's using is an ordered map. So it maps keys to values, it, and it remembers the orders in which those keys were inserted. This leads to some complications where like, uh, it's annoying to actually, let's say you have an array 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you want to take out index 2. So one way of doing it, I'll throw in a 0. So one way of doing it, let's see what that looks like. So 0, 2, 1, 3, 4. Unset happens to unset both variables and array indices. So unset array 2. So now what's this going to look like? 2 is just gone. So that's perfectly fine. More annoying is if you want things to actually be like an array, I'll put random numbers. So now, notice my indices. So I want it to just be like a C array, where it goes from 0 to length minus 1, and I can iterate over it as such. But as soon as I unset the second index, it doesn't like what was in index 3 doesn't now become index 2. Instead, it just removes that index. Now you go 0, 1, 3, 4. So this is perfectly reasonable. Uh, it's just annoying, and you have to do things like array, splice, and yeah. So if, what, ha what would happen if you had a for loop, and you, and you wanted to go over the, all the elements? Mm -hmm. When it hits 2, would it like yield error? Or so this is the reason. Uh, so iterating over an array, there are two ways you can do it. You can use a regular for loop. Uh, it's count. Uh, this is another intricacy of PHP. So a lot of <coughs> most languages, I would say, have some sort of like length or len or something indicating the length of an, length of an array. In PHP, it's count. So count array i++. So let's just print array i. OK. Notice undefined offset 2. So it's just going to fail. This is the reason that, for the most part, you never need to iterate over an array like this. Might be an exaggeration. But you never need to iterate over an array like this because PHP provides its for each syntax, where for each item, or what is it, for each array as item. So now if we print array, or print item, we'll discuss it in a second. So that works perfectly fine. So. The way that for each is working is the first argument is the array that you're iterating over, and the second argument item. Through each pass of the for loop, it's going to take on a uh, take on the next thing in the array. So remember, the array has an order. So the first time through the for loop, item is going to be one, two, three. Then it'll be one, two. Then it'll be one, three. Then it'll be two, three. Then it'll be two, one, three. So uh, things get really weird when you do something like for each, let's actually see what happens, because you should never do this. But what if we unset array 1? All right, so, oh yeah, so that was probably expected. Uh, you're iterating over this array, and each time you're unsetting the first index, so for index 0, so the first thing item takes on value 0. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3. But inside of the for loop, we unset index 1. So that means 12 is gone. So item, actually, I want to, I'm not looking at the right thing. So print uh, dot php eol. php eol is just new line, but uh, it's Technically, more portable since new lines in Windows is different from new lines on Mac and Unix. So 
on Windows, new line is backslash r backslash n, whereas everywhere else it tends to just be backslash n. PHP EOL is configured so that it uses whatever the new line of your system is. So print that. Let's not print our array at the end. PHP test.php. OK. So I had no idea that that would be the behavior. Uh, I item still takes on the value 12, even though we unset 12 before we ever got to it from the array. So it looks like what for each might be doing. Don't take my word on this. But it looks like for each like creates a copy of the array. And then item takes on all values of that copy. So even if you modify the array before, like modify the array inside the for loop, uh, it's still going to, uh, it's it, like item will still, it won't care. Item will take on the original values. Let's actually even try unsetting it. What if this is array one equals hello? Yeah. So even though we put hello into the array, item never takes on that value. Another thing about for each loops, or, or well, th uh, there's another syntax to for each loops where it's you put two variables separated by a uh, arrow. So this first variable is going to be the key of that value. And this second variable is going to be the same exact item. So like this is uninteresting here, but if we go back to our original case of uh, a arrow 1, uh, b arrow 1. <coughs> so here, if we just iterate for each array as item, item is going to be 1 every single time. But if we also want to know the key associated with that item, then we do as key arrow item. And so now we can do like print key dot dot. So now it's iterating over printing each key and its associated value. Additional thing we can do in for each loops <laughs> is you might see this syntax. So ampersand before variable names tend to be how PHP does references, where references are very similar to pointers. You do not have pointers. So you never deal with memory directly. But you do have references, where one variable refers to the same, uh, the same thing as another variable. So let's, inside of here, let's do item, let's go back to 1, 10, or, oh. 10. So let's do item plus plus. That still exists in PHP. Can still do plus plus. PHP test.php. I have to print it. Print array. Okay. So we print to 11. So if I had just done for each array as an item, then item will be the value 1 the first time through the loop. It'll increment 1 to 2, and then it, we're done. So then it'll go through the second pass of the loop, and now item is 10. And increments item to 11, and then that's just thrown away. And then we print our array, and let's see that this is just 110. So the increment we did was lost. But for each array as ampersand item, so now this item is, is the same item as this right here. It's the same thing. So item plus plus is modifying array 0. And uh, that's basically you can also do k item, and you can do array k plus plus. So another way of doing that, uh, where we are free to modify item. But that will not modify our original array. But if we use k, which is our key, then we can just index into our array using that key and increment that. So this more directly modifies our original array. You can even do that 
if for some reason you wanted the ability to modify, you wanted, well, actually, this is perfectly reasonable. So you didn't want to have to write array k plus plus. You just want to write item plus plus, but you still wanted to say, like, if k equals equals a, triple equals, never use equals equals. So if k triple equals a, then increment item and then print our array. So now, what do we expect print r to do? What value should be printed? So only if the key was a do we actually print that. Uh, all right. You in you probably very rarely, if ever, will need to define functions in PHP, but you might see something similar where you define a function like function whatever. And usually you would say foo bar and then define it to be whatever. But if I do this, then that means that whatever calls whatever calls whatever, whatever calls baz, so the first argument passed to baz can be changed. So uh, let's do. foo plus plus. And inside of here, let's do baz of item. So now we are calling a function. The argument is taken by reference, which means that if we modify it, we're modifying the thing that was passed in. And printing this, we expect unless I messed up syntax. All right, we got 211. So it was actually incremented. Notice we needed references in two places. So what if I did this? What does this mean? Double change. Yeah. So item is just a copy of the value in the array. So item will change to 2, but the array bracket a will still be 1. Or what if I do <coughs> this? So now it's just the copy of the argument sent, or item is sent as a copy to Baz. And it, so the copy of the argument will be incremented to 2, but item itself was never incremented to 2. And item is the same thing as array bracket whatever, so the array was never incremented. So both those places need it. And PHP, so it's usually pretty smart about this where you might think, oh, I want to pass by reference. This is actually a question on one of the P sets. So uh, the question, it was like a questions.txt thing where it said, like, why might you want to pass the struct by reference? So what was the answer to that? You can have to copy something big. Yeah, so a struct can be arbitrarily large. And when you pass the struct in as an argument, it needs to copy that entire struct to pass it to the function. Whereas if you just pass the value or the struct by reference, then it just needs to copy like a four byte address as the argument to the function. So uh, PHP is a little bit smarter than that, where you might think, OK, so if I have some function and I pass to it an array of a thousand things, does that mean it's going to have to copy all 1,000 of those things to pass it into the function? It doesn't have to do that immediately. It, if inside of this function, it never actually modifies foo. So if foo equals equals hello, return true. So notice we never actually modify the argument inside of this function, which means that whatever was passed in as foo never needs to be copied because it's not modifying it. So the way PHP works is the, the arguments are always passed by reference until you actually try to modify it. Where now if I say foo plus plus, it will now make a copy of the original foo and modify the copy. <coughs> so this sa saves some time if you're never touching this massive array, you never actually modify it, it doesn't need to make the copy. Uh, 
whereas if we just put this ampersand, that means it doesn't even copy it even if you do modify it. This behavior is called copy on write. Uh, you'll see it in other places, especially if you take an operating system course. But uh, copy and write is a pretty usual pattern where you don't need to make a copy of something unless it's actually changing. Yeah. Uh, what if you had like the increment inside the test? So like only one element out of like a thousand would need to be changed. So I, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it would copy the entire thing, but it's possible that it's it's possible it's smart enough that well actually what I'm thinking is like imagine we had an array that looks like this. So array two equals and then index A is an array of one, two, three, four. And index B is an array of to whatever. Uh, I need commas between all of those. But imagine there are commas. Uh, and then C is the value D, or 3, whatever. So now, what have I done? OK. So now let's say we do baz of array 2, where baz does not take this by reference. Or array, <coughs> what do I want? So foo c plus plus. So this is such an example where we are passing array two as an argument, and then it is modifying a specific index of the array by incrementing it. So honestly, I have no idea what PHP is going to do. Uh, it can easily make a copy of the entire thing, but if it's smart, then it will make a copy of these keys, where this will have its distinct value, but th this can still point to the same array, one, two, three, four, and this can still point to the same array. I'll iPad it. So we pass in this array where this guy points three, this guy points to. One, two, three, four. This guy points to 34, whatever. So now that we're passing it into uh, Baz, we are modifying this. So if PHP is smart, it can just do like And now we still had to copy some memory, but like if there are these huge nested subarrays, we didn't need to copy those. Uh, I don't know if that's what it does, but I can imagine it doing that. And this is also, again, like a pretty big advantage of C over PHP. PHP makes life so much easier for a lot of things, but you kind of have absolutely no idea how well it will perform. Because I have no idea underneath the hood when it's uh, making these copies of things. Oh, is that going to be a constant time copy? Is it just going to change one pointer? Is it going to be a ridiculously difficult linear copy? What if it can't find space? Does it then need to like run garbage collection to get some more space? And garbage collection can take arbitrarily long. so. In C, you don't have to worry about these things. Like every single line you write, you can pretty much reason about how it's going to perform. Uh, all right. Okay. So let's look back at these. So, how oh <coughs> nice is it that you don't have to deal with hash functions like this, anything like that. Since working with hash tables is so easy now, here's a fun puzzle to work on. Open up a file called unique.php, and in it, write a PHP program, also known as a script. So PHP, uh, we tend to call them scripts if they're like short things that you run at the command line. Uh, basically, any language that you don't compile 
but you're going to like run the executable at the command line, kind of call that executable a script. So like I could just as well write a C program that does this, but I don't call it a script since I first compile it and then run the binary. But this PHP program we're going to call a script. Or if we wrote it in Python or Perl or Node.js or any of those things, we'd call them all scripts because you run them at the command line, but we don't compile them. Okay, so we could do this pretty quickly. Uh, we aren't going to use argv write. Let's just blow through this. So called unique write a program. You can assume that the input will contain one word per line. Actually, argv will be pretty trivial to use. Unique.php. So first thing first, we want to check if we have been passed one command line argument. So just as you would expect argc and argv in C, we still have those in PHP. So if argc triple equals 2, or does not triple equal 2, then I won't deal with uh, I won't deal with like printing a message or anything. I'll just exit with error code of 1. So I could also uh, return 1. Exit is like, so rarely in PHP are you at this state where like, we're at a, how do I want? Usually like you're in a function called by a function called by a function called by a function. And if something goes wrong and you just want to exit everything entirely, then exit just ends the program. This also exists in C. So if you're in a function, in a function, in a function, in a function, and you want to just kill the program, then you can call exit, and it will just exit. But in PHP, it's even more rare that like we are at this top level. Usually, we're inside some sort of function. So we call exit so that we don't have to return up one thing, which then realizes there's an error. So that returns up. If that recognizes that there was an error, so we don't want to deal with that. So exit 1. Return 1 in this case would be equivalent. Oh, let's face there. OK. So then what we want to open, we want to f open. The arguments are going to look pretty similar. So we want to open argv1, and we want to open it for reading. And that returns a resource, which we're going to call f. So this looks pretty similar to how C's does it, except we don't have to say, like, file star. So we just say f. OK. Actually, I think this even gives us a hint as to a PHP function called file, where PHP file, what this is going to do is read an entire file into an array. Uh, you don't even need to f open it. Oh, it's going to do that for you. OK. So lines equals file argv1. So now all of the lines are in, of the file are in lines. Now we want to sort the lines. How can we sort the lines? We sort the lines. <laughs> <laughs> and now we can print them or whatever. So uh, probably easiest way is for each lines is line, echo line. We don't need to pass lines by like reference or something we could sort. Like so that's, changing. this is in, uh, this is where like sort would be defined as function sort ampersand array, uh, other way around, uh, ampersand dollar sign array. You don't pass, when you call the function, you don't pass it by reference. <coughs> it's the function that defines it as taking it as reference. So up until PHP 5.4, this is actually exactly what went wrong when we, up, uh, when we put everything to our servers when we went from 5.3 to 5.4. So up until 5.4, This was perfectly reasonable, where a function doesn't expect to take it as reference, but you can pass it as reference. So if the function does happen to modify it, 
it's still modified. As of 5.4, you're not supposed to do this. So now the only way you pass by reference is if the function explicitly does it. If you don't want it to modify it, then you need to do like copy equals lines and pass copy. So now lines will be preserved and copy will be changed. And PHP unique, might have messed something up. Unexpected sort. What it, uh, sort, does that, is that going to take? Oh. There's going to be something that does this for us. Oh, no, it's not even there. Oh, notice when you read the manual that, like, look, uh, the first argument is expected to be an array, and it's taken by reference. All right, why is this complaining to me? Oh, because I have this function sort still in here that I don't want. OK, PHP, unique.php. Uh, I didn't pass it an argument because I don't have a file. Well, it's php unique.php on test.php. So here is test.php all printed out in a nice sorted order. Notice that a sorted order is kind of weird for a uh, code file because like all of our blank lines are going to come first. Then we are going to come all of our one level indentations. And then come all of our no indentations. But yeah. So for the source code, it wasn't passed by reference. So that it only passed by, it was passed by value, right? So you never, when you call a function, it never determines whether it was passed by reference. It's the function definition which determines whether it was passed by reference. And looking at the function definition of sort, mm -hmm. or just looking at this, it takes the argument by reference. So regardless of whether you want it to t uh, take it by reference, it does take it by reference. It modifies the array in place. So here, like this is just not allowed. You're not allowed to do this. Oh, okay. This sort is going to take lines by reference and modify it. And again, if you didn't want it to do that, you could make a copy of sort, where even in this case, so copy is Copy isn't actually a copy of lines. It's just points to the same thing until it first gets modified, where it's first going to get modified in the sort function, where because it's copy and write, now a copy of copy is going to be made. And uh, what was one other? Oh, that you can also do this. Uh, that's the other place you can see ampersand. You see it in for each loops. You see it in function declarations. And you see it when just assigning variables. So now we have accomplished nothing by doing this because copy and lines are literally the same thing. You can use lines and copy interchangeably. Later, you, you can do unset copy. And that doesn't unset lines. You just lose your reference to the same thing. So as of this point, now lines is the only way you can access lines. Questions? Yeah? Uh, completely lost topic, but you don't have to close PHP with the. A... You do not. Okay. Uh, it's actually, so I would go as far as to say it's bad practice to close them. Uh, that's probably an exaggeration, especially in a script. but. Let's see what happens if I do this. So that did nothing. Uh, what if I wanted? Oh. Wait. This isn't doing. It. Oh, because I need to pass an argument. Did I just shoot? I called it wrong. PHP unique.php with an argument. So now I don't even need this. I'll pass it a valid argument. All right. So this printed, I whatever it's printing, I, it's I'm printing copy, and copy doesn't exist. So lines. Okay. So now it printed everything, and then notice all this junk down here. Because 
in PHP, anything that is outside of a PHP bracket and, or PHP tags is just going to be printed literally. So that's why HTML, it's so nice that like I can do div uh, blah, 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 class or whatever, blah, 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 and then do some PHP code, and then do end div. And now printing this, so I get my nice div up top, everything that PHP printed, div up bottom. So disastrous <coughs> when something like this happens, which is pretty common, uh, just a stray new line at the bottom of a file. Wouldn't think it'd be that big of a deal until you consider the fact that uh, with browsers, so how redirects work, or like basically any headers work. So when you make like your connection to a website and it sends back all of these headers and things like response 200 or response redirect or whatever. So headers are only valid until the first byte of data is sent. So you can redirect thousands of times, but as soon as the first byte of data is sent, you're not supposed to redirect again. If you have a stray new line at the bottom of a file and you try to do a, or let's say that like you call or you use this function and then you want to, what is it? Let's say it's another file that's like uh, your whatever, index.php. And now you require once something. I, I can't think of an, a good example of it. The issue happens when this line at the bottom gets echoed. And you don't want anything to have been echoed yet. So even though you didn't intend on anything getting echoed, Something did get echoed, and so now you're not supposed to send any more headers, and you're going to get complaints. So <coughs> you just don't need those closing tags. If you plan on doing something with HTML, then it's perfectly reasonable to do like down here, div, whatever. And then at this point, you, I don't know, you can or you cannot include them. I don't, it doesn't really matter. But in PHP scripts, it's rare to close it. Like when everything is PHP, absolutely everything, then you don't really need to close it. Slash, you shouldn't close it. Okay. Dealing with strings is much nicer than in C. Uh, in PHP, you can specify a string with single or double quotes. So single quotes, you can't use escape sequences. Uh, can I constantly escape? Everybody says blah, 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 blah. OK, so yeah, printf is very rare in uh, PHP. I guess I would use printf if I wanted to do a sort of thing where like, uh, where like in pset5, I guess you use sprintf or whatever. But you want to do like 001.jpg and 002.jpg. So that sort of thing where I want to actually like format the text, I would use printf. But otherwise, uh, I would just use like string concatenation. I never really use printf. So here in PHP, okay. So we're just differentiating the details between uh, quotes, single quotes and double quotes. So the biggest difference is that single quotes are, it will be printed literally. Oh, and so there is no char data type in PHP, unlike C. So this is equivalent to this. They're just, they're both the strings. And the nice thing about single quote strings is I could say, hello world, blah, 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 dollar sign, dollar sign, woo. So what happens when I print this is it will print it literally. Let's get rid of all of our stuff. So echo stir one. So it literally printed all of those things. Dollar signs, uh, uh, dollar signs, backslash ends, which you would think would be new lines, all of those things, 
It prints literally. The only thing you need to escape are single quotes, because otherwise it would think it's closing the single quotes. <coughs> Double quotes, completely different. So we already see the syntax highlighting is cluing us onto what's about to go terribly wrong. PHP unique, undefined variable woo, because this is interpreted as a variable called woo. So double quotes let you insert variables into, so let's say like i equals 10, or actually let's just say name equals Rob. So echo, hi, my name is name. So it recognizes, the heck did I just do? So it recognizes this as a variable. And so when I run that, and I will insert a new line. So hi, my name is Rob, and hello world. This is because I never moved the printing of woo above. So there is one further step you can do. So like array equals bracket uh, one, two, two, three. So what if I want to print the first index of array? So you're like array zero. The syntax highlighting is a clue. What is this going to do? be unique. So hi, my name is one, which is not what I wanted. Uh, let's try <coughs> uh, syntax highlighting lied to me. But let's try a one, b, two. Actually, this isn't, that's how I would have to write it. Uh, unexpected, single quote, T in caps, blah, 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 blah. All right. The idea is that, like, it's not recognizing this as part of the array that, like, it's not recognizing this as array indexed by letter A. If you want to do that, surrounded by curly braces, and now whatever in this curly brace will be interpolated which is the word we use for magically inserting these variables into the right places. So now doing this, PHP unique, and hi, my name is one, as expected, or hi, my name is Rob. Okay. Uh, so one thing that's kind of nice about single quotes is that like there's some cost to interpolating. Like, as if you use double quotes, then the interpreter has to like go over this string, making sure that like, oh, here's a variable. Now I need to go get that variable and insert it here. So even if you don't use any variables, so nothing inside of these double quotes needs to be interpolated. But it will still be slower <coughs> because it needs to go over the double quotes looking for things that need to be interpolated. So single quotes can be a bit faster if nothing needs to be interpolated. And I tend to even use single quotes where like, hi, my name is dot array a anyway. So like that's going to be equivalent to what we had before. Or dot. But it's a matter of preference. And like the speed difference, if you're using PHP, you probably don't care about the speed difference. Uh, there isn't enough to reason about to begin with. All right, any final questions? We actually didn't even get through all of it, but this stuff was boring. So, <laughs> oh, last thing that uh, kind of nice in PHP is when you're dealing with uh, 
HTML, you'll use it a bit. So the nice shortcut syntax for printing a variable. So like array a. So here, uh, this is like, there's some bit of argument over like just without putting PHP here. So this is called like short tags. So officially as a PHP 5.4, I think, it's no longer like this is de deprecated. Now you are recommended to put PHP. This is still supported. So short tags with the less than question mark equals still perfectly fine. It is by default supported. So you can use these as you wish. And they're pretty convenient. Any questions? All right. Uh, stay classy, San Diego. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>